best podcast in Long Beach, California. This is Tacos and Workouts. Hola, Nicole. This is me, Little Hater. And guess what, Doug? This podcast is brought to you by the Patio Nuts. You had me at hola. So go out and get some of these nuts. It's the Patio Nuts. <laughs> what it is, what it is. Podcast. What are the homes? It's me, Little Hater, the best podcast in Long Beach. Guess what, Doug? I have a very special guest with me today. Tell him who you is. Tell him who you is. Yo, this is Vince Royale, straight out of Jersey, but I used to live in Long Beach, and now I'm in uh, I'm in L.A. now, but Long Beach is the spot, man. The LBC. Lived here for four years, bro. For four years? Four years, man. Right there on uh, PCH and Redondo. On the border of gay and ghetto, right there, man. That was that was that was the spot. One block was gay and one block was ghetto. And you can never tell, Doug. Like you, you take one step and size, you're there, and then you take another stop, and then you know you're at the other place. You know exactly. You don't know if you're gonna get jacked or jacked off. So it was, you know one of those spots. <laughs> yeah, man. This guy, they got a lot of that stuff going around here, man. They got a lot of a lot of people like weirdos and like and and like people like living on the streets and and it's like the Walking Dead. Sometimes you don't know if it's like a zombie or or a person living on the street. You just gotta be careful, like all the times, man. Man, but you know what? That that's what gives Long Beach personality. You know what I mean? It's like the I lived in Jersey City, and Jersey City was just like Long Beach, but we didn't have the beach. At least like over here, you could you know walk three blocks and it's the beach. You know, yeah, so so wait, why did you come all the way from, from New Jersey to like right here, Doc? So I actually, 2008, I moved to L.A. to uh, pursue comedy and uh, acting. So I came out here and they, they told me L.A. is the place to be. And uh, back then they told me that uh, uh, the rent was better in Long Beach. So <laughs> I moved to Long Beach for a couple of years. I did the Laugh Factory a lot back in the day. This is actually when I first met my first... Headliner comedian, Tommy Davidson, right outside the Long Beach Laugh Factory back in 2008, 2009. And he gave me some good advice, man, as a comic. I asked him, hey, what do you have, what kind of advice can you give to someone who just started doing comedy? And he said, you got to go up seven nights a week, three to four times a night. I'm like, damn, it's a lot of stage time. But, you know, it, it, that's how it becomes instinctive, dog, you know? Yeah, that, you, you, you don't get good if, if you don't do, if you don't put in the work, that. Yeah, man. You know, it's like it's like you, you. You got a mustache, man. It takes work to grow. You know, I can't even grow a mustache. I've been trying for many years now. Hey, Doc, I'm going to let you know in a little secret. Shh. It's a fake. Oh, damn. It's a fake. I need one of those, man. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been doing comedy, Doc? Today is my, actually not today, this month is my 14th year of doing comedy. Stand up. You know, I, uh... I don't count the pandemic, though, you know. During the lockdown, I did a lot of Zoom comedy. That still counts, right? It still I'm counts. Still, I'm, still, still I'm, still joke, I'm still joking uh, on Zoom. Yeah. And what, what made you, like, start, like, doing comedy? Like, when you were, like, a little vato, like, what made you decide, you know what? I want to be up there, <laughs> like, telling my jokes to people, you know, like, drunk people. They're, like, going to, like, heckle me and tell me, hey, you're no good. Like, well, what, what got you started, Doc? I didn't even, this wasn't even my dream. My dream was to be a, a music producer or a DJ. You know, comedy just came at, by accident. I was going through a bad breakup back in 2008, and I just started hanging out at bars and bowling alleys, and I seen people going up there talking about their life, and they were laughing. I said, well, I can do that. So I went up there and started, because I needed therapy. I was going through a bad breakup. I needed to talk about my shit, you know? So I started going up there and just started talking, and people were laughing. And I said, wow, they think this shit is funny. They found my pain funny. So I said, let me keep doing it then. So it started off as like a therapy session for me. And then eventually the host was like, man, you should come do, uh, join the comedy contest. And I started signing up for comedy contests and I started winning little ones around town in LA. And then I said, shit, I'm hooked now, man. And it became more of an addiction after a while. <laughs> yeah, you need, you need like, you get hooked on the laughs and then you're like, yeah, I want it more and more and more. And yeah. it gets addicting, Doc. Absolutely, bro. And, but you know what? Now it's like it's become more of my career now. So now I'm, you know, I'm traveling the world doing comedy. I didn't think me talking about my life and my pain and just my observation around me is going to get me places. So, so ha. Ah, so for anybody who never believed in me, here I am in the, in the grass 
of Long Beach Laugh Factory. We're performing live in the Laugh Factory, <laughs> Doug. <laughs> Who would have thought Little Hater and Vince Royale yeah. in front of the Laugh Factory performance? Exactly. 14 years ago, I was in front of the Laugh Factory, and now I'm on the grass. Yeah, we're, we're working backwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doug. So this is Vince Royale. And you know what? Not not only is he a funny, uh, uh, you know, comedian on stage, he's also funny on the TikTok and on the Instagrams. Hey, Doug, would it be okay if I show him like a couple of your videos? Yeah, go for it, bro. Man, I got a bunch of those. All right, we're gonna take a short little break, and then we'll, we'll be right back. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Have you read the Book of Mormons? Yeah, of course I have. Assalamualaikum, buddy. <laughs> I think I found a mermaid. Where? Right here. Look. Where? Watch where you're going. Came in when I'm done, like everybody in my life. <laughs> I think she's drunk. <laughs> All right, Doc, we're back. So, hey, check it out, Doc. What'd you find in the beach, Doc? What, 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 what you got there, right there Doc? Oh, man, we found a mermaid. A mermaid? Like a real live mermaid. You know, I thought they were only on TikTok. But I said, you know what? We got to go out there and hunt for mysterious creatures ourselves. And I found a mermaid from East L.A. <laughs> Wait, well, you, you were trying to, well, what, she have our coconuts or did she have she, seashells? I think she had some coconuts, man. You know, they, they fell down the palm trees. So, you know. And, and you wanted to eat those coconuts. Man, you know what? They're good for you. <laughs> you know, especially with a lot of, uh, you know. With the pandemic right now, you know, the, the coconut juice is good for your uh, immune system. You know what, that I, I would I would call that a shrimp, you know, like usually what you do with a shrimp is like you chop off the head, you throw away and the body's good. But in this situation, Doc, I don't even think the body was good, Doc. Nah, that's why I just wanted the coconut juice. <laughs> well said, Doc, well said. <laughs> All right, Doc, you saw his kids. He, he's a funny vato, man. Um, you know, you got to check him out, Doug. Where can they find you on, on, on the Instagrams? Man, uh, it's at Vince Royale, R-O-Y-A-L-E. Vince Royale on Instagram and on TikTok, it's at Vince Royale Comedy. So you can find me there. I'm also on Facebook, Vince Royale. I got uh, videos everywhere. Hey, Doug, so, like, do me a favor and, like, tell, t try to, like, describe your comedy. You know, like, how, what kind of styles you got? My, my comedy is basically what I see. It's, it's very observational. You know, it's about life, my experiences with um, with dating, being married, living in L.A., moving from Jersey to the West Coast. You know, now I'm 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 adopt. I adopted the West Coast now, man. I'm 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 L.A. for life now. Hey, hey Doug, you know, I, like when I talk to you, Doug, sometimes I get like an East Coast like kind of feeling, like like you know. And I have a I have a friend that lives on the East Coast too. Yeah. He lives in New York. And and it's like um like a famous guy, Doug. You know. Ah, uh, either I I get Christopher Walken, or uh, Joe Pesci a lot. <laughs> Those guys. Oh yeah, you, you sound like Joe Pesci or uh, Christopher Walken. You know, because I, I I I noticed that I didn't notice I had an accent till I moved out here, and people are like, oh, say dog, dog, walk, walk. I'm like, I didn't know. I thought that was a normal way to say it. You know. And I was like, oh, say, I do sound like I'm from New York or Jersey. I didn't notice that till I moved to L.A. It, but it, it, it's like like everybody like New York kind of like wear hats and they kind of dress the same and kind of like yeah. talk the same. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. At least if you if you you live in a certain neighborhood, you pretty much dress alike. It's the and uh, we wear we wear a lot of layers because it snows out there. It gets cold. So I'm never moving back to Jersey, New York. I'll come visit. But I'm I'm in love with L.A. It's California love all day long. And that's why. A lot of people don't know. Tupac was born in New York, and he moved out here and claimed he claimed Cali all day because California, man. You can't beat the weather. You know what I mean? Everything here is uh, so much, I don't know, relaxing, bro. Like, they got hood and ghettos out here, but it's hard to get depressed. Like, in New York or Jersey, if you wake up, it's just nothing but buildings. But over here, you wake up, you're in the ghetto, you still see palm trees. You can drive to the beach. The weather's nice, so it's like it's hard to get depressed. And I'm like, all right, cool, man. You know what? Gunshots, but it's okay. There's still palm trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's nice out here. It's hey, like, like, you know what? If you get shot in New York, pow, 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 the last thing you'll see is a building, right? If you get shot out here, pow, 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 whoo, palm trees. <laughs> last thing you see before you're gone, huh? The sun. <laughs> and the weather's nice. 
Hey, that, so, like, like your style of comedy, is it like one-liners? Are you like a rifter? Like, do you go after the crowd? Do you make fun of the people? You know crowd? what? I try to combine everything. You know, I do from, from riffing to jokes to stories. So it's not like one particular style. I like to incorporate every style, you know. Um, the only thing I'm not really have mastered is impressions. I'm bad with impressions, bro. I can't do... I used to try to do an Obama impression, and Sebastian was like, nah, dog, that don't sound like him at all. I'm like, ah, you know what, I ain't going to even try to, you know, I'm just going to focus what I'm good at, which is jokes and riffing and, uh, you know, just just having fun with uh, on stage, man. So, Doug, for, for being as long as you, you've been a comedian, Doug, like, how do, how do you deal with hecklers, Doug? Because... Cause I'm starting off, dog, and then like I only performed like a couple times, and I already had one. You know what? There's a lot of different comics handle it differently. I'm a nice type of comic, so I don't really turn and start roasting the audience. That's not my style, but I know comics that works for them, right? They roast and go in. But for me, it's like I have fun with it. I play with them. Or if you want, if you if you don't want them to keep fucking with you, I just ignore them. A lot of times, a lot of comedians get thrown off, and somebody's drunk, and they're yelling at you. And then they, they, they get thrown off. A lot of times, I just play with them because I know they're just having fun. They don't mean to heckle you because they're just so drunk they want to be a part of the show. Yeah. So a lot of times, comics think they're heckling them. No, they're just having fun. So I'm not going to go in on them unless they continue to keep doing it. You know, I ignore them. But if they continue to do it, then yeah, then I'll go in and I'll address it. And you don't want to do that because I have the microphone. I'm always going to win. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I was in the audience one time, and, 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 and this comic, man, she came at me hard, dog. You got to stop heckling her, man. I wasn't doing nothing, dog. I was just, like, sitting there, and she goes, hey, dog, you're fat. And I was, it, it, It's the mustache, bro. It was the mustache. She was hating yeah, on, yeah. on a little hater, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but, like, proper etiquette, dog. It was like, if you go to, a, like, a comedy clubs, it's like, laugh, don't say nothing, don't act dumb. Come on, dog. It's like, be respectful, man, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's the ideal situation, but, you know, you can't control drunk people sometimes. So, like, I feel like in dive bars, it's a little more challenging, but in comedy clubs where people are there to laugh, it's a lot more fun because, you know, they know they know what they're there for. What I, my experience with bars, it's like you're interrupting people's drinking. Yeah. So that's why they're going to be like, ah, I don't like it. Yeah, 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 I'm here. You know what I mean? They want to be a part of the show. But sometimes for me, after doing it for a few years, it's been I know how to navigate through it and have fun with it, you know? It's like, but uh, with young comics, you know what? I just ignore it, you know, for the most part. Until you get confident and have an arsenal of responses, then I would just ignore it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And come up with different responses after a while. Because I have, like, ammo in my back pocket. Okay, I know what to say when this comic, you know what I mean? I mean, if this audience member is saying this. You know, and that's from like years of doing dive bars after dive bars and being around drunk people. You know what to say when there's like a group of drunk women or a group of drunk guys or, you know what I mean, or somebody just yelling at you by themselves. So you'll, have, you'll, you'll start to develop um, an arsenal of responses in different scenarios. Where, where is like the, the craziest place you ever performed? Because like people tell, like when I started like getting into comedies, people were like, you know what, you're gonna be forming like like laundromats and all these places, and the, and then like I didn't believe them, and now that I'm out there like doing the comedies, <laughs> it's like yeah, dog, you end up performing in some, some I, crazy places, dog. I've been in so many different situations. I've done it all: laundromats, backyards, living rooms, freaking uh, biker bars. Uh, ghetto hood rooms, abandoned furniture stores. I mean, you name it, I've done every crazy show. I think there, I, I, I don't know, man. It's uh, so there's a long list of places that are like, man, whose idea was it to do comedy here? You know what I mean? But it works. The laundromat's cool because you know, because you can get your drawers washed while you're telling jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm killing two birds with one stone. I can wash my drawers and get these jokes out the way. Hey, you know, like, 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 if, if I was like saying jokes and I was on the laundry mat, you know what? Uh, and, and it wasn't working out. I, I would, I would pull out my skitties. Like, Ta-da! Yeah, and be like, especially if you got like a skid mark. Yeah, you'll get a laugh. You're yeah. Like, oh my god, he shitted himself. Yeah, go, go for the simple <laughs> laugh, die. You know, because, because a guy, you know, with skid marks, it's always funny, die. Yeah, it definitely, man. Not, not while it happened, but you know. No, that's why you got to carry, like, an extra set, like, in your pockets, you know? Yeah, that's the worst. 
But yeah, man, I, I mean, I've done a lot of crazy rooms, weird rooms, but uh, I've done I've done it all, man. I mean, biker bars, <laughs> dive bars, every every single situation you can think of. In the traveling, how's the traveling, Doc? Because people don't get it, Doc. They're like, they think they think uh, you know, it, it's it, it's all like fun and games. But well, what's what's the deal with the traveling? You know, when I first started doing comedy, maybe my sixth or seventh year of comedy, I started doing road gigs, and it sounds fun, but not when you're driving 10, 12, 14 hours from one gig to another. You know, the first few years, you know, you're still trying to build your reputation as a comic. So I did it because I needed the stage time. And a lot of places only outside of L.A. or New York will give you more than they'll, they'll let you perform for 30 minutes to an hour. In places like big cities, like L.A. and New York, they'll only give you five, ten minutes as a new comic. So I, need, I knew I needed to go outside of that. So I, it, that helped build my comedy muscle by performing in front of like different audiences. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's crazy because outside of L.A. and New York, there's not a lot of diversity, bro. Like you go into places like Utah, Montana, Oregon. <laughs> Yo, I'm like the brownest person there. And, you know, it's nothing but uh, white farmers or Native Americans. So every time, like, everybody would ask me, like, oh, man, what, so what, what native tribe do you belong to? And I have to tell them, bro, Raider Nation all day, man. <laughs> <laughs> Go Raiders. <laughs> That's my tribe right there. <laughs> <laughs> and any Indian casinos, Doug? Oh, man, I've done casinos, everything, man. Uh, there's, there's, there's random casinos in different parts of the country. You wouldn't even believe, like, man. You're driving like two, three hours in the middle of Washington and randomly there's a casino, like in the middle of nowhere. And there's like a little thriving community right there. It's crazy because like you go in different parts of the country and you'll, you'll go into like an Indian reservation here, this so-and-so nation. Like their livelihood is, is dependent on that casino. Like the, the, um, the man the the com you know what i mean you know what i'm talking about like everybody works at the casino everybody yeah, yeah, makes yeah. everybody that's how they feed their families working in the casino everybody's a poker dealer blackjack dealer you know everybody works the gifts gift shop and i'm like wow i'm blown away because that one casino is supporting that whole community giving them everybody jobs so that's crazy you learn like oh wow man there's that's that's their world all right thank so we're going to take another short little break, and we'll be right back. All right? <laughs> as long as there's toilet paper at Starbucks, you'll always have toilet paper at home. Follow me for more budgeting tips. Good evening, uh, Mr. Royale. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Okay. Here for your physical, huh? Yeah. Okay, we just stand up. All right, turn around. Put your pants down, please. I hate this. Man. I don't. Alright, I'm gonna count to three. I'm gonna need you to cough. Real right. loud, okay? One, two. <coughs> louder! Oh. Come on, louder! There you go. Alright, hold on. Alright, listen, I'll be right back. Oh, man. Jeez. Mr. Vince Royal? Hi, I'm Dr. Ortiz. How are you today, sir? Wait, who's who's the other guy? You mean my custodian? <laughs> What's going on, Doug? What happened there, Doug? You know what? I just wanted to go in for my routine exam, and uh, I got scammed likely in person. I ain't like that, man. And it was very uncomfortable, and I'm never going back to that doctor. In fact, I'm going to report that doctor to the Better Business Bureau. And, and who was that guy? That was the janitor, Doug? Yeah, man. And uh, I don't know why they hired him, because he got a record. Apparently, you know, he got prior. So they should do background checks on all their uh, maintenance and janitor workers. It, it was, it, to me, Doug, that was funny, Doug. It, it was funny when he went like this. Yeah. That was funny, Doug. And funny for you, <laughs> not for me. That wasn't fun. <laughs> hey, Doug, I'm going to be honest with you, Doug. It happens to, to a lot of us, Doug. Yeah. But, but, okay, and let me tell you my story, Doug. So to me, it happened to me like this, Doug. One time I went to, a, to, 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 uh, to one of those clinics, Doug, and I, I don't know why, the nurse, right? She, uh, I thought she was a doctor, Doug. And, and she told me, 
pull down your pants. And I'm like, all right, doc. I thought she was a doctor. And then she held my, you know, cacahuates. You know, you know what cacahuates are, right? Yeah. Yeah. She was holding my cacahuates. And I go, what's wrong, doc? And she goes, no, you're fine. And then she walked out. And then after that, like, like the doctor came in. And then uh, I said, who are you? And she goes, I'm the doctor. And I go, well, who was that lady? And she goes, oh, that was a nurse. And then I was like, okay. Man, at least it was the nurse. You know, mom was the janitor. Not that. But she wasn't a good-looking nurse, Doc. No. She, she still. Yeah, Doc. And, and, and then, and, but, but, but this is the sad part, Doc. All right, check it out, Doc. 15 years later, Doc. 15 years later, I was thinking about it. And I'm like, oh, she took advantage of me, Doc. That's, that's how slow I am, Doc. Damn. 15 years later. So it happened to me, Doc. So you go, have you uh, gone back since? Nah. Because I don't like to be taken advantage of that. <laughs> it's all right. Dad. Nobody knows. It's, it's all right. right. It's all right. You know what I mean? We're here for each other, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean? You know what? But there's a support group for people like us that's been, uh, that's gone to the doctor and been taken advantage of. Hey, Doug, speaking about doctors, Doug, people don't like to go to the doctors, Doug. And I'll tell you why, Doug. Check it out, Doug. I went to the doctors, Doug, and he told me, like, that I was fat, Doug. And I took the news like Luke Skywalker when Darth Vader told him that it was his father. I said, "No, no, no! This is impossible." <laughs> and 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 and, and uh, it turns out that I was true, Doug. But you know how I found out I was fat, also fat? I started looking at the little differences, Doug. It's like it started raining outside, you know, and 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 you know how like when when uh, when there's shrinkage, you know, like when you wash your clothes and then you dry them and they don't yeah. they don't feel so good. So it was raining outside. And then the sun came out, and then my car was dry. And I tried to get into my car, and I go, oh, my car must have shrank, you know? So that was, that was another indication that, that, that I was getting fast. And then... I don't I w- know. I don't believe the doctors anymore. I think, you know, we don't get fat. Oh, there's a cure to that. You know, eat what you want. You know, live your life. If you get a little bigger, just buy a size bigger. That's all. You know, like a couple months ago, I was large. I wear extra large shirts now. Problem solved, right? Yeah, Doug. I mean, you know, I, I just, I just, I just like check it out, Doug. I, I was at the beach, and, uh, and and then I hear a kid say, "Look, a whale!" And then I, I stood up, Doug. Motherfucker was talking about me, Doug. And then uh, and then I said, "Good luck at school, Doug." And he's like, "Why?" And I said, "You'll see." <laughs> Kids are mean. You should have kicked them. I should have, Doug. I should have. Yeah, Doug. <laughs> and that's another thing, Doug. Well, what was the deal with too many people having kids, Doug? You know what? It's it's good it's good for tax season. Hey, Doug, what do you think about the gender reveals? I mean, they're fine as long as you're not an adult. Hey, 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 hey you know what I like, Doug? I like it when people do the gender reveals, Doug, and then they get hurt, Doug. I know. I went to a gender reveal and the dude was like forty-five. They had to like like. like he's like, I'm a I'm a girl. Okay. <laughs> he like found out like forty years later, Doug. Yeah, I'm like, oh. I was just here for the tacos. <laughs> yeah, Doug. <laughs> but a, <laughs> and then he showed his taco. He showed his taco. Uh, he used to have a hot dog, but then he had yeah. a taco. That yeah. was that was uh, the weirdest gender reveal. Yeah, people do that, man. It, it, it's it, it's never too late to change your genders, right? Nah, man. You could always switch it up. It makes it fun. It makes it interesting, right? Nah. And that's what they're doing nowadays. <laughs> Did you hear about the people that had the gender reveals? And then they burned down half of California, Doug. No. Yeah, Doug. It happened like two years ago, Doug. It was like it was like a couple, and then and then they already had like four kids, and then they just had to have a gender reveal party. Oh yeah, I remember that. It was like in the woods. Yeah, they were yeah. Having a gender yeah, reveal yeah. party. Yeah. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm like, it ain't a surprise, Doug. You already got four kids. You want to surprise me? Adopt a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doug. Yeah. So, um. Tell us a little bit more about your comedy. Where are you going to be performing next? Yeah, I'm going to be at uh, this week. I don't know when you're going to post this. <laughs> uh, no, no. It, 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 it's going to be well, anyway. like watch all over the time. Cool. So check it out, man. Every month I have a show at Huntington Beach in the rec room. The last Saturday of every month. And every week I have a weekly show in Covina, City Grill. Every Thursday night, come through. $4 Modelos. All right? That's a good deal, man. $5 specialty drinks. And there's no cover, man. Just go there, have a good time. I have a new headliner every week. And at the rec room, I have a new headliner every week, uh, every month as well. So monthly show at the rec room in Huntington Beach. Weekly show in the City Grill in Covina. 
new headliner. Man, it's it's a killer spot, man. Fun, fun show. Do you also like like put on the shows yourself? Like like you know like you. I yeah, my wife and I we uh, put the shows together. But it, so if I'm not in town, she's running the show. So I do a lot of I travel a lot too. So I'm on the road or I'm, you know, I'm gonna be on a, you know traveling a lot all over different places all over the world. So <clears throat> and so if I'm not in town, my uh, my queen is holding me down. That's good. That's Shout out to uh, Sierra Royale. <laughs> hey, Doug, you you also do like a character, right, Doug? I do a bunch of them characters, you know. Uh, but yeah, come to the show and you can see my characters. <laughs> yeah, because I was there and you did you did like a, a Bruno Mars. Yeah, Bruno Mars. He's a rapper from the Philippines, so that's one of uh, one of my characters that I do. But I do I, I do a couple of them. Uh, I want to surprise him though. Yeah. So no, come to yeah. the show and you'll get the the full Vince Royale comedy experience. You know. Oh yeah, this is just a teaser trailer. And then, you know, boom. <laughs> All right, Doug. So check it out. He's a very funny vato. You know, you know who he is. You know where he grew up. You know, you don't know his comedy stylings. He's got the uh, uh, the Instagrams, the TikToks. You know what, Doug? He's a cool vato, man. I want to thank you for, for, Yo, for coming to, to, to the show, Doug. Thanks for having me outside. I appreciate this. And we're standing don't, in don't grass. Let, don't let me hang it, Doug. Oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a Cali thing. Is it? The fist bump. Yeah. You know what I mean? In Jersey, we didn't grow up doing that. What, what'd you do? The what'd handshake you do? was just like, eh, eh, that? and that's it. And it snaps it. Yeah. All right. And then walk away. Yeah. I, I didn't start fist bumping people until I went to Cali. I'm like, all right, cool, man. That's, that shows power. You, you know that's a Mexican thing, right? The fist bump thing? Yeah, it came oh, from no. Mexico. That's, that's dope. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why, but. Yeah. Well, I'm fist bumping everybody at the swap meet. <laughs> Next time I see him, yo. <laughs> Bow. Yeah, I started doing that in Jersey when I came to visit. They're like, what are you doing, dog? They're like, oh, it's a fist bump. Like, they looked at me like I'm I'm weird. It, yeah, it's, it's a California yeah. thing. Yeah, man. Handshakes are different in different parts of the world. Different parts of the world. Yeah, man. Like in uh in Alaska, I heard they use their noses. Don't uh, they? Like, yeah, the es they, Eskimo they, kisses? Yeah, nose bumps. <laughs> nah, I'm not done with that one, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nose bump, homie. Uh, hey, hey, it's not that kind of party. <laughs> <laughs> the, right here in California, Doug, the, the only the only uh, nose bumps that people want to take are yeah. the cocoa puffs. You know, there, there you go. I heard about those. Yeah, <laughs> especially in the Hollywood. Yeah, the booger sugars. Yeah, in the bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> All right, big dog. <laughs> All right, Doug. So I think that's it for, for today's Doug. Yo, uh, tacos and workouts. Go check them out. YouTube people, follow me, Instagram, TikTok, and uh, Cash App and Venmo. I'm on all those platforms. <laughs> All right, Doug. And with that said, I'll catch you guys a rato.